Um, yeah, this is F. So I want to start by saying this because I know that there were we've had less people viewing at the start, and we have a whole bunch more now. Like this is actually really cool. This is a lot of fun. This is something totally different. I don't want anybody to sit there being like, oh, in, in any kind of dread. Like when this kind of thing happens, there's so much good that actually comes out of this because it forces us out of our normal movement into things that we wouldn't have normally done. For people like myself, this is like an adventure. I, I just get a, I get a total kick out of it. Yeah, I haven't gotten there yet. And so my encouragement is that in these moments, like embrace this and like Rob was talking about, bring people around. Like let's let's uh, let's do the um, let's do these home groups. Like this is a really huge opportunity to connect with one another outside of the church and to do church in each other's homes on a Sunday morning. So invite people into your home. And uh, uh, meaning like that maybe wouldn't have somebody normally calling them or try to set up with other people to do uh, a party on a Sunday. Like we can make, we can have a lot of fun with this and do things a little differently than we normally would. So I really encourage you guys with that. Um, but what I wanted to do to kick this off was I wanted to bring up a couple people to share from our leadership team because, because sometimes getting some encouragement from somebody uh, and from people that have gone through things it helps our faith to be established, and it helps our, our faith in, in moments of turmoil to actually get the clear picture of where we're going and where we're headed. And so I wanted to start by bringing up um, Hadassah. Where, where's, oh, it's right here. Well, coming. she's coming. Oh, like, like there's that many to choose from right now. Where's Hadassah in the group? Hadassah? I saw my mom shine, but... Hadassah, come on up. I saw her in the crowd. <laughs> I'll give you this one. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So I know it would be obviously wonderful to be, you know, seeing you in person, but uh, this is again an opportunity for us to be creative as well. So I want to uh, just give you a little bit of encouragement from my perspective, and actually from a godly perspective, I wish you'd say. Um, so as you guys are watching from um, home, I hope you are being blessed and hope that you are, you know, enjoying each other's company and Spelling that, um, in saying that, I just wanted to encourage you guys uh, in this particular circumstance. Obviously, these are the uncharted waters that everybody, including our government, in dealing with that. So, having said that, how we respond as Christians is something that I want to speak a little bit about. And obviously, as our pastors did, you know, they're being responsive. And, uh, and, and to be really careful and using wisdom to do what we are doing today. So as uh, things unfold, obviously they will let us know the rest of the stuff. Uh, but being responsive and how to respond as Christians. Um, you know, this is where we should rise to the occasion in a way. You know, the difference between believers and unbelievers. The difference between knowing God and what we have in Him. You know, the steadiness, the peace that we can bring, the hope we can take. You know wherever we go and think about that speak hope and become hope carriers as steve Batman said you know so think about that this is an opportunity for us to really bring that into the atmosphere wherever we're going some of us still will be you know going to work tomorrow so what do we take you know i know people will come at you with a bunch of questions i'm already expecting that you know from many many people how i respond you know makes a difference for somebody in front of me you know, whether I can wrap things up or bring calmness to the situation. So think about that, how we respond. That goes to not only people that we interact with outside, but also people we interact with in the homes. So think about that and be respond. Obviously, we want to respond from a heavenly perspective, know, knowing who God is, you know, what we have in Him, right? He talks about several things, obviously, I don't have to remind you guys, but, you know, well, a couple of things I want to say. You know, Mr. Stilwell always, you know, whenever I think about the scripture, I think of him, because he talks about this a whole lot. And that's in Proverbs 18, 20 to 21, it says, from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You know, so I just want to remind you, as we are talking to each other, interacting with each other, speak life. Life abundantly. You know, okay. it's all negative, you know, this and that and that. But, you know, we can speak life to each other and life more abundantly. Think about that, okay? And you also know in 2 Timothy, it says, God has not given us fear, spirit of fear, but of power, power of love, and sound mind. So think about being sound mind in this situation. 
yeah, we need to take care of ourselves, we need to take care of our family, we need to be responsive, you know, heed to the local officials, what they're saying, you know, all of that, but heed to the word of God even more, you know, be of sound mind as we respond to this kind of situation, okay? And we know what God has said, you know, and his power or his strength is made, you know, powerful in our weakness too, anything like that. You have great, great, you know, ways to encourage yourself too as you go up. Read Psalm 23, read Psalm 20, 91, you know, any of that to build yourself so that you can carry that hope. So be responsive in a heavenly, from a heavenly perspective. All right? Yeah. That's oh, for Thank you. Have a good day. I like that. I was commenting on Facebook while Hadassah was sharing there. I'm like, lip produce. <laughs> you best have some good lip produce at this time of the year, uh, this time that we're going through right now. And I want to actually bring up too, Marion. Yeah, you guys don't get to hear from hear from Marion very often, but Marion is like one of the foundations of this place and yeah. what she has done, what she has created and crafted, and she's always quiet about it. And so this is actually really exciting for me that she actually gets to get up on the microphone here. I'm like, come on, Marion. I got home last night from a meeting and I said to Dick, what did I say yes to? <laughs> it's this. <laughs> so anyway, um, I believe that my words, I believe that my words are powerful. I believe that my words are creative. I believe that my thoughts are creative. And our imagination is so powerful that I've heard it say, it's your spiritual womb. So keep that in mind. Um, this last Valentine's Day, Dick got a bad report from the doctor. And uh, he said, you have cancer. So he came home and he told me and I just said, hmm. <laughs> I said, the word says you're healed. Yeah. Yeah. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Yeah. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yeah. Uh, what's Galatians 3.13? We have been redeemed from the curse. And that certainly is a curse. So anyway, we've, um, we have no fear. We haven't cried over it. Um, in fact, 36 years ago, we went through the same thing with me. They told me I had cancer. And it was like, so another little blip to go through. So um, we had no fear then. We were at peace. And we're at peace now with, with Dick. So um, what we're asking is, that you pray for us, but I don't want anybody asking um, the Lord to heal us or to heal Dick, because we know we are already healed. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I've had people, uh, or I actually I don't want anybody praying that uh, the Lord will heal him because we know he's already So we're asking you to stand with us. And um, I keep telling Dick, you know, the Lord has done so much for us, uh, especially Jesus when he died on the cross for us. And it just, we're in a receiving mode. mode. Um, we just thank the Lord every day for everything that he's given us. Health, wealth, everything. I don't want anybody um, having your thoughts either go to another funeral. We'll have to go to no way, no funeral. Remember what I said, your thoughts create, and your words create. So we're speaking nothing but life. Yeah. And we just, we just thank you that you will stand with us. And um, we just thank the Lord that this place that we're in right now 
we call it sometimes a hospital. And you know, when you come here, the presence of the Lord is here. Sometimes we don't even have to ask. It's just the presence that heals us. We have that same spirit in us that raised Christ from the dead. So we can just rely on that and just be so happy that we have the Lord that we can, that stands behind us and loves us. So I guess that's it. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Marion. And uh, I just love the the courageous and the powerful faith that Marion and Dick have walked in, and they are definitely uh, pillars of this church for so many reasons, like so many good reasons, and this is one of them. And so um, I'm actually going to be sharing with you guys very quickly and briefly today. By the way, be welcome to be the peanut gallery because usually you can't talk very much at church. I'm like, this is the chance where you have the comment field. Comment away. Like, it's, it's like talking in church. See? Fun things we get to do differently. And the other great thing about this is this is the best Facebook Live attendance we've ever had. I mean, come on. Another thing that we get to have joy in. And, uh, and I, I know that this was really short notice for a lot of people today as far as trying to get together with some different people on Sunday. We're trying to be really intentional. We're going to try to, to, to throw some more things out there, ideas, as the week goes on and how we can go about this. We'll be listening to the government. And I mean... You guys know we wouldn't have we would not have shuttered the the doors today if it wasn't for the the certain things that were passed down that we are honoring and respecting and so we are not moving in fear we are actually moving in obedience and these things are not immoral issues so that's why we stand with our government on them um, whether we are thrilled with them or not and so as the week progresses we will continue to update but um, if if uh, homes are going to be what God is going to be doing for the next few weeks or so. Let's do it, and let's do it well. So, so begin to plan that even now. And if something changes and we're all back here on Sunday, super cool. But if it doesn't, let's really make a go at, at doing this together and really living in community in this season and in this time. Um, so, okay. I, I have to be really fast with you guys here this morning because I know that there's a couple more things that we want to share. Um, but one of the things that I want to say in regards to what's happening is in the, in the world around us right now, we are experiencing... Uh, fear and panic. I'm like, come on. Being in Wegmans, I laughed. I don't even want to go back in there again, to be honest with you, because it was so insane. Anybody gone to Wegmans out there? Can you raise your hands on Facebook for me? Throw like a, either throw an angry symbol out there, throw a, a wow face. Um, but if you've been in Wegmans, I'm like, I can't buy water. I'm like, I can't believe they're rationing toilet paper. I still don't understand the rational rationing toilet paper. I'm like, this doesn't cause that issue. Um, very, very unique things here. But fear and panic, they actually make the brain work in a stupid way. It, it, a lot of times it creates stupid, and there's a little bit of a spirit of stupid out there that we have to fight against. And I want to give a verse really quick uh, about that in particular. And you guys know it really well. i got to pull it up on my Bible here, not my Bible app. Um... And yes, this is going to be an unusually quick Justin message. You guys are going to be shocked. The only time I do quick messages are weddings and funerals. And today, we're going to do a quick message for quarantine because I know Jessica wants to share something too. And uh, promising then. <laughs> huh? Am I, one of my pro I don't know what Jessica's going to share, but I, I know that I'm going to go as quick as I can here. Um, hold on a second, guys. She's in my Bible. Quite back there. <laughs> Come on, I can get there. Here we go. I finally got there. First Timothy, or Second Timothy 1. Go there with me really quick. I should have bookmarked it. It would have been a little quicker. Second Timothy 1, and uh, we're going to read 7 through 10. Yes, Jan, Wigman's was crazy. Uh, so, okay. Second Timothy 1, 7 to 10. Join me in this one really quick. Uh, he's dealing with Timothy, because Timothy's going through a struggle right here. Recognize the context in which this is written. Paul is writing to encourage Timothy. It's obvious that Timothy is fighting through some fear and fighting through some other feelings of inadequacy in this season that he's in. And so Paul is saying, hey, Timothy, come on. You got this. You got this. And this is what he begins to tell him. Um, in verse 7, uh, we're going to continue with what he's been sharing. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and 
a sound mind, and I'm going to share with you another word for that in a second, and we're going to read a couple more verses first. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God, which, by the way, you don't have to do right now. Just You can, you can wipe that one off. You're not suffering for anything. Um, he's, he's facing some persecution for what he believes, and we're not facing that right now. We're just facing a national pandemic. Um, according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. But now has been revealed by the, the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. So I want to pause there. And what I want to say is, first and foremost, there has been something, he's trying to tell, tell Timothy in this moment, there has been something that has been infused into you. There has been something that is crazy and eternal, and death has been abolished, life has been brought, and immortality has been brought to life. He's, he's trying to encourage in him this crazy hope in the midst of what he's walking through. But I want to take a step back even to the point where I, that first verse that we read. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love, and I'm going to give you a different word for that. Discipline. A sound mind is a mind of discipline. And I love what, what Hadassah had said because that place of a sound mind, he's literally saying to Timothy, you got to get a sound mind about you, man. Your mom, he, it, it, the really nice way of saying this is Timothy isn't moving in a sound mind right now. Timothy is struggling with fear. That's why Paul is addressing fear. And he's telling Timothy, fear creates a place where you do not have a sound mind. And so I want to encourage you, when you, you begin to see or feel these things like picking up on the, on the bend that's all around you, realize that if you partner with that, you're partnering with the world system, that fear, and you're beginning to do what the rest of the world does, and then you begin to look like the world, and then the world doesn't even know where to look for hope. Does this make sense? Like, if your mind isn't set on God, if your mind isn't disciplined in what you're saying, and then what even Hadassah was saying, I love that, the, the produce of the lips... Like, your lips, the produce you're going to be releasing right now, people are going to be gravitating towards all around you, whether it's in your family, whether it's at work, if you're at work. <laughs> you might be with your family a lot right now, actually, because some of you are probably sent home. But wherever you're with, be very aware of those thoughts that are in your mind. And I want to read another one, and I'm going to read this one out of the Passion Translation, about, uh, about taking our thoughts captive, about that discipline of the mind, that, that place of a sound mind. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5, and I'm going to just do this quick. If you get there, not it, uh, cool. If you don't, don't worry. Write this down. And out of the Passion Translation, it's so cool how it says this. And he's dealing with, uh, this is going to be a little bit out of the context of what it was written in, but I believe the principle still applies to what we're sharing. Uh, so, uh, what it was written in. Uh, so, for although we live in the natural realm, we do not wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. Oh man, did you guys catch that? That verse takes on so, such an intense meaning when you hear it this way. We capture like prisoners of war... You hear that? Some of you, you need to capture some of these bad boys running around in your head. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. That is the discipline of the mind. That is taking a hold of thoughts. Like, come on, we've all been there. You got dumb thoughts. Running. Anybody that's mar married, you've had those dumb thoughts that you got to take captive when you and your spouse start to have an argument. Those are the thoughts that start to run around being like, oh, they don't really love me. They don't care about my thoughts or my feelings or this, that, or the other. And that's actually one of those thoughts that you've got to take as a prisoner of war. Because it's running around and it's shooting all the good stuff. As much as it can get towards, I love the picture that is shown to us in the Passion Translation. It's this destructive little bugger with a gun going around blasting every good thing it can find. And so what you got to do is you got to be militant about get, getting a hold of that thought, taking it captive, and either, I mean, my, my thought of it is don't really take it captive, just put the thing out of its misery. That's what I'm going to probably elaborate on there. Uh, that's how I would say that. 
But we need to, in this season, not get caught up in the media storm, not get caught up in the way that the world looks, because when you look like the world, you then have nothing to offer the world. We need to be able to take our thoughts captive so that when we step into every situation that we're in, all around us, that hope is being released. Like, if, if you don't have hope, you have nothing to give the world right now. If you don't have joy, you have nothing to give the world right now. Right now, the world knows fear, panic, and, stu and stupid, the spirit is stupid. It is up to us to set the tone for what is possible. If you look all through Christian history, Christian history was so, or, or the history of the world was so impacted by Christians in the most difficult times. The healthy Christians became the beacons by which people turned to. If you look at the Fox's Book of Martyrs, oh my gosh, that will show you beacons in the midst of insanity, in the midst of plague, in the midst of people being persecuted. The Christians were the ones that shone so brightly that even their persecutors were like, what is going on with these people? Does this make sense? Because they were able to take thoughts captive and they were able to release the thoughts of hope, release the thoughts of joy, release the thoughts of peace everywhere they went. I remember a story in Fox's Book of Martyrs where it was a mother and they were with, their, with her child. They were, be, they were going to be killed by... by um, uh, the Romans had come in, they were persecuted Christians, and this family had been taken, and her son started to cry, and I'm not saying this is normal, um, and, and she's over there smiling, and she's telling her son, stop crying, what joy we have right now, like, we're about to experience something amazing, don't cry, we'll see each other soon, and her son actually was able to grab a hold of his mother's hope, and they were both martyred. In that moment, she went forward in joy, and that joy greatly influenced the people that were her captors and her persecutors to the point where she's sitting there like, they were sitting there like, what is going on? These are the weirdest captors we've ever taken. Like, these are the weirdest captives. They're not, like, begging for their lives. They're not afraid. They're not scared. They're not weeping in, in, in like, oh, don't do this to me. They're actually proceeding with joy. This is so weird. you got to be the weird ones. We have to be the weird ones. i got to take ownership there, too. So I hope this makes sense to what I'm saying. I'm going to read one more verse, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jessica. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Okay. Again. I'm using the principle here, not as much the contextualization of what it was written in. So the principle behind this is so simple. How do you get hope? Here, let's read that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip to the second half of that verse so that you know how to get hope. The God of hope is saying this is how you get hope. And he says in the second part, by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may abound in hope. So whatever you are going to be experiencing in these moments, if you don't have hope, there's a little bugger running around in your head that needs to be taken captive. And the way that that dude is taken captive is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when the power of the Holy Spirit comes, the joy and the peace that he brings lead to hope. Do you see that? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Joy and peace opens the door for hope. I, I hope this is making sense to you guys today, because I don't have all the yeses and amens that I normally have. Yeah. And so I, I'm asking you this, in these moments, go to Holy Spirit when you do not have joy and peace, and say, give me joy and peace, wherever I've lost joy and peace, show me the little bugger that's shooting my joy and peace, that I may put him down, and that I may begin to take those thoughts captive, so that I can receive your joy, receive your peace, so that I can abound in hope, so that when I go to work, so that when I go around my super negative, pessimistic, like the end is coming family or friends, that I can be the one that begins to release hope, that I can be the one that begins to release that joy and that peace. So I encourage you guys today, in the midst of what's happening, you carry it, you got this, we have this. This is gonna be amazing, and when people look to you, when they look to me, they're gonna say, what is different about what these guys are carrying in the midst of this? They're not hoarding toilet paper. And for those of you that are, that's weird. And that's okay, but that's weird. You know, maybe you're like me, and you're like, I think I could sell it. That's the only reason I want toilet paper right now. I think it's a great opportunity to make money. That's the only reason I want it. Well, not the only reason, but. So I hope you guys are, are hearing what's being said today, and I want to bring Jessica up now, because she had something that she'd like to, to release.
Save your, save phone, your books phone books. For, yeah, does anybody even have a phone book anymore? <laughs> All right. Um, I am super excited as I was praying and asking the Lord, what is the word? He was laughing at me, with me, both, <laughs> that he already gave us the word, you guys. How many of you saw that little uh, COVID-19 and it said, I saw like three different versions of it, at least on Facebook, where it said, Christ over viruses and infectious diseases. And the 19, they turned into Joshua 1.9, which is the word, the scripture for Vanguard for this year was Joshua 1.9, right? This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God already gave us that, like, before the coronavirus ever even appeared, right? Then I started thinking about the rest of the words he gave us. He gave us multiple words about health, that we would walk in health this year, right? So we don't have to be afraid because he already told us in advance that this is a year where we're going to walk in abundant health, where we're not only are we going to be... Uh, not sick, but our health is actually going to get better than it's ever been. That was the word of the Lord to everyone at Vanguard in January. And we sometimes forget. We're like, oh yeah, oh no, coronavirus. You know? <laughs> but God already prophesied to us, we're going to walk in abundant health this year. Another word that he spoke to multiple leaders in the, in the church, that this was a time of resting. I'm going to read you even um, word for word some of Kristen's word that I read to you previously. She says, I'm increasing the vision of my people, giving them an increased capacity to see my divine vision, to see what I'm about to do. I'm about to do a new thing, something never seen before. They will be given, you, me, will be given revelation through my word and my voice about the times and seasons. It will be given to those who find my rest and intentionally position themselves in that place of sitting with me. I am not looking for a busy people, but those who are about finding time to be with me. And she goes on to say that God wants to release in the time of slowing down, he's gonna release greater vision and that there's going to be downloads of revelation so that we can help others, that he's taking us to a higher perspective to see the big picture, and that we will be able, from that vantage point, we will be able to see all the attacks of the enemy, but know that we are positioned in victory. Isn't that amazing? So God already prophesied that to us ahead of time, that, that we were going to have a greater opportunity to slow down, to sit at his feet, to see his vision. Then there was multiple words about increased intercession, right? That he's told us ahead of time, this is a year for much intercession. So we know God's already called us to it. We've already added that intercessory prayer time to our schedule at Vanguard, but we're hoping and praying that you guys are all adding more intercession to your prayer lives in this year in particular, that this is a time where intercession must become a priority. That was from my word. And that intercession is the prophetic heartbeat of my people. Right? And that we will not succeed unless we place the correct emphasis and time into intercession. And, and today, it's amazing, you know, um, our president is so uh, open to faith-based initiatives. So today, he has called for this day to be a day of prayer, a national day of prayer. You know me, I'm all about the, the one that is the first Thursday of May every year, the national day of prayer. Um, I'm the county representative for Niagara County, but our president proclaimed in response to a trial in our nation, a day of prayer. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. So he's even aligning with God's heart for our nation to have a spiritual awakening for God's people to come before him, sit at his feet, 
And for us to know, my word was uh, rest in God, healing, and authority. And I, I had released this previously. This decade has been prophesied as a decade of the people of God finally entering the rest of God. Ceasing to strive and knowing who they are in Christ. For many, this will bring significant breakthrough in health and family restoration, which is really funny because all our kids are going to be home and everything, <laughs> because the primary hindrance has been weariness due to striving and warring, just, you know, running around all over the place. A great wave of healing will begin this year, supernatural healing. This is what I wrote in the end of December. As my people learn to sit in my presence, feed on my word, which is what Hadassah was talking about and Marion, um, and soak in my love, many great breakthroughs will be accomplished in the spirit realm without much effort in our bodies at all. We're just going to be sitting in that place of prayer. Time in scripture is a key to renewing not just our minds, but also our spirits. My people will live from a place of refreshing and have supernatural energy to run with the plans I've given them. This will also release true identity and the authority of the children of God. Much will be accomplished from this place of authority in Christ. That's what God told us already in advance. Do you guys see how, and Kristen even titled her word panoramic vision, which is kind of interesting with a pandemic, right? It, it's a vision over the big thing. So I just felt so encouraged as I was reading all this, right? That God has prepared us in advance to know that we are equipped, that we have the words prophetically. And here's some scriptures just about the power of these promises from God, right? A lot of times we just think like we're scrambling to grab scriptures and start declaring them. And, you know, I totally believe in Psalm 91 and Psalm 23 and declaring those words. I've been praying through those off and on, but we know when we have that rhema word from the Lord before it ever appeared, how much confidence can we have that God has said, you're going to rest. You're going to find rest in me. Your health will abound. Your families will be stronger and more close-knit and you're going to enter into a place of intercession that's going to equip you as you sit at my feet to take authority over the whole territory. Wow. Right? So Numbers 23, 19, just so you start to begin to realize God spoke this out. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through. No. God is faithful. We sang about that. 2 Corinthians 1.20 For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. Right? And through Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. All of his promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Right? So we don't have to wonder well, God prophesied health over us, and he prophesied authority and intercession, but maybe he didn't know about the coronavirus coming, the COVID-19 pandemic. No, God knew in advance, and he equipped us in advance. 2 Peter 1-2 says, May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. And I want you to see that thing. It's, it's not just God, and it's not just Jesus, it's both. It's the Father's position of ruling and reigning from the throne, and it's Jesus who saves us, who paid the price for us, who cleansed us and bought us with his blood, and who heals us by his stripes. We were healed, right? So as we grow in that knowledge of God's authority and Jesus' saving grace, we will have more and more peace and grace. And by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Right? We saw that right now. He prophesied to us in January what we needed now. 
He spoke it in advance. And we've received all of this by coming to know him, sitting at his feet, being with the one who has called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. So in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. God's promises are the means by which we take hold of victory. We, we take his promises, we take his words, prophetic words that we received this year, and scriptural promises, and we combine those, and as we fill ourselves with that, that is the means by which we are lifted out and we are partakers of his divine nature. Does that make sense? So Ephesians 6, the whole armor of God, I'm zooming through this here. Um, I want us to remember, it says in Ephesians 6.10, a final word, Paul's talking. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. We don't want to be weak. We don't want to be afraid. We don't want to be running away, right? We want to be able to stand firm, unshaken. Even though everything around us is shaking, we're not shaken because we are on the solid rock who is Christ Jesus. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. We see that, a spirit of fear, we see the chaos, we see all kinds of stuff going on, and even this sickness itself, we are able to take authority over these things. As the church, we are God's answer for the world. So therefore, Put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. And, you know, he goes through, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. Don't watch the news day and night, right? We already know, fake news! <laughs> God gave us a heads up that... A lot of the stuff that is coming through our news is fear-based, is negative, is not even accurate. Um, you know, they're looking for ways to draw people in and entice people to watch more and be addicted because of all the adrenaline and fear that's going off in their bodies, so they just can't stop watching the news. And, and really, we need to put on the belt of truth, right? We need to say, what is the truth of God? What are we going to focus our minds on, right? It's not that we ignore what's going on around us, but we don't have to walk underneath it. We walk from God's perspective, which is that Jesus has already overcome. And so we walk in peace. So then um, we have the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news. So that you'll be fully prepared. What's the good news? That Jesus saved us from everything. And that produces peace. And why is it on our feet? Because we're supposed to spread that peace and that good news everywhere. Right? <laughs> we need to be ready. It's not that we should be uh, backpedaling and hiding in this time. We're the ones who are going to be knocking on the neighbor's door saying, hey, are you okay? Is there anything you need? Can I pray for you? Do you need me to pick up something from the store for you? Um, being available, being ready to be the gospel carriers, to be the light who comes into our spheres of influence, right? Who are those? Maybe there's family members you know that are struggling, and you can periodically call and pray with them, check up on them, just encourage them, uh, neighbors, friends. Um, checking in on those who are maybe at risk and can't get out to the store and, you know, are concerned about their health. Maybe you're the one who does their shopping for them and you bring them what they need, right? This is an opportune moment to shine for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, in addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith. 
to stop the fiery arrows of the devil, right? I've told you guys that before. The shield of faith is not our faith. It is a trust in the faithfulness of God. That is what protects us. When we know the faithfulness of God and the favor of God surrounds us, then we know that no weapon that's formed against us will prosper. We have a shield to protect us from the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet, right? You're covering your mind with that perspective of hope that God is going to save and redeem all of it. And you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to worry about how it's going to work out because you have the promises of God. Romans 8, 28, right? That he will work all things together for good. So no matter how bad something looks, you know that he's going to turn it around. We sing that song, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in our favor. Yes, he will, right? It's an old one. People are like, what song was that? <laughs> it's in the 90s. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but... It is the word of God, it's the hope, and it's the confidence that we have, and it actually shields our mind, it protects our minds, if we think and we meditate on the salvation of God, right? It's a helmet that keeps everything from harming our minds. And we take up the sword of the Spirit, woo, raise your sword, right? Which is the word of God. The way that we wage warfare is by declaring the word of the Lord, speaking it out, right? We don't have a physical sword that we're stabbing the viruses with, you know, or the spirit of fear, but we speak out the word of God that God has said 2020 is a year of divine health, that we are not only going to not be sick, but we're going to increase in health. We declare out that this is a time of great victory and authority and healing. Waves of healing are going to move supernatural healing throughout the world and the nation. Right? We declare the promises of God that we're going to become mighty in our understanding of our identity in Christ and our authority as, as leaders that we stand in the nations. We stand in our city. We stand in our country as the ones who bring the victory of God to every situation, right? He already told us all this stuff, so we begin to speak that out, declare that, pray that, and, and that is the way that we will see victory. So I want us to think about this concept that he's a redeemer, and I want us to ask him for his divine sight, to see through his eyes right now, because... You know, we can look from our own natural perspective. We can look from the perspective of the, the, the second realm of what the enemy is doing. But that none of those are the realm that we want to live from. We want to live from the one where we're seated with Christ far above all the principalities and powers. We're seeing God's perspective, right? So Holy Spirit, right now, we just lay down all the things we've been focused on, all the, the ways that we've been filling our minds and our hearts with something that is not producing joy, peace, righteousness, confidence in the gospel. Lord, we want your divine sight to know what you are doing in this time. We thank you, Lord, that this time is a time when many are looking to God. We know our president called for a day of prayer across the nation today. Many are looking to God who maybe don't normally ever think about prayer, but this has shaken them. So they are looking to you, God. We, we know this is a time when many are seeing their need for salvation. They know that they need God's help. That, that they're afraid and that, and that they are crying out for a savior. We know that this is a time when people might be willing to receive practical help and prayer and things that they wouldn't normally do in past times when they felt comfortable and secure. Lord, there's a great opportunity for your gospel to be spreading in the midst of this time. 
We know that this is a time, because our president has lifted up God again over our nation, that this is an open heaven season where God is being exalted in our country. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that, that as, you know, those maybe who are weeping about March Madness being canceled, that God, you are being lifted up, that your name and your uh, place of prayer, of being on our knees and seeking your face and humbling ourselves and turning from our wicked ways so that you can heal our land, that that is being lifted high over every aspect of society. We thank you, Lord, that even in business and finance, God can use maybe what we have or what godly believers have and, and make it a blessing. I saw something that the owner of Zoom is going to let all the schools use Zoom technology to be able to reach their classes at home. He's just going to make it free. So what a, what a testimony of the goodness of God, of provision, of blessing, Lord. There's, give us creative ways that whatever we have in our hand, that we could use it to be a blessing in this time, to be a, a voice of hope, to, to provide for those who are in need. Lord, we thank you too that even in this time as the economy is shifting, that, that you can use this time to transfer, your word talks about transferring the wealth of the wicked to the righteous. So Lord, we pray that those who are going to be good stewards of finances would be able to see those right opportune moments in the finance realm, Lord. And we pray for new innovations. This is a time where there's needs that we've never seen before and new innovations, new technologies, new inventions can arise, Lord. That you want to give downloads to us. God, we thank you that as our nation feels shaken, as the world feels shaken, everything is shaking. The finances, the, you know, entertainment, the sports, the uh, travel, whatever. All the things that we hold as distractions or as uh, support systems, everything is shaking. But Lord, we know that your word says when everything is shaken, that what is from God is what remains. So we can believe that this is actually going to work for good for revival, for global transformation. And Lord, that distractions being removed will pave the way for greater intimacy with God. And, and that the people of God, the church of God, can be revealed even more as a light in the world, just like we talked about, Pastor Justin talked about. Lord, that we can shine as a beacon of hope and the church can be restored to places of influence in communities and in cities and in even at governmental levels, Lord. We thank you that, that none of these things that shake the world shake you. And we don't have to be afraid and we don't have to be shaken. Because you are greater. And we are seated with you. We are seated right now. Just see yourself right now seated at the right hand of the Father who has all authority. Seated in Christ who has overcome everything in the world and that everything has to bow at the mighty name of Jesus. Everything has become a footstool. The enemies of life and joy and peace and salvation have become a footstool. They're under the feet of Jesus. And we are the body of Jesus. So they're under our feet. Yeah. Thank you, God. And we do right now just lift up and join with the nation in prayer as we finish up this service. Lord, we declare that God, you are moving throughout our city, throughout our nation. We thank you, God, for the blood of Jesus that is powerful, that is mighty. We declare 
your cleansing power over all who are sick, all who are affected by this, Lord. We declare that this virus would be destroyed by the power of the blood of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak to COVID-19 and we command it to die in Jesus' name. Yeah, we speak to the atmospheres where fear and chaos are dominating. We declare the peace of God, the shalom of heaven, that there would be a sound mind that is restored to the people of God, that they could be influencers, that they could be bringers of peace, just like that yeast that gets distributed through the whole lump of bread, that every single one of us in all the places where we go, we would release the atmosphere of heaven. We would release the presence of God and the peace of God, that we would stand out in that time. Wherever we go, that people would say, I feel different. I feel different when I'm with you. I feel not afraid. I feel hopeful. I feel better when I'm with you. Lord, may we see ourselves right now, even like Superman when he would fly up and soak in the sun, that we would see ourselves getting supercharged by your presence and walking around as portable churches. We know the church is not a building. The church is not this building. We as people are the church. We are the living stones and we bring the glory of God. We bring the presence of God wherever we go. So we thank you that nothing can stop the church or close the church. Lord, right now we are communing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with every believer who is looking to you right now, who is lifting up the name of Jesus on high. We are one in your spirit. And you see all of us all over the globe right now. You hear the, the one cry of all of your saints declaring your salvation, declaring your peace, declaring your hope, God. We are the church. Yeah, and we stand in victory with you, God. We thank you, God, that nothing Nothing, no weapon that's formed against any of your people will prosper. We thank you, Lord, for healing to visit all those who are sick. We pray, Lord, for those who are in the hospitals and those who are uh, first responders and different ones who have to go to the sick people. Lord, we pray for health for them. We pray for protection for them. We pray, Lord, for uh, anyone that that we know, Lord, that we would be able to, to be hands and feet. We would be given divine strategies of how to bring your hope and your love and your provision to those who have a need. Yeah, that we wouldn't just think about protecting ourselves and our own family, but Lord, we'd be the opposite. We talk all the time about being bold in our faith, and this is a great opportunity to be bold with love, or to follow your spirit's leading, and to be bold with love, those who need to be helped, those who need to be provided for, that we can have no fear, we can walk in. Jesus touched the leper, and the leper was cleansed. So Lord, we ask that you would increase our faith as your people, we ask that you would increase our boldness to share your love. Not to share a doctrine, but to share your love and your presence with the world around us. And we pray, Lord, for our, our government. We pray that, God, you would guide them. We know, Lord, we, maybe those of us who are not afraid have felt a little frustrated with some of the um, things that they've set into place, but we know that their heart is to protect. We believe that their heart is to protect. We choose to believe the best. And so, Lord, we just pray over the government that you would give them wisdom, 
that you would give them divine strategy, that you would give them direction how to govern well our, all the people so that we can be safe, that we can be healthy, that our society can flourish. Lord, we just lift up all the churches everywhere that, um, Lord, you just continue to increase the, the faith and the blessing and the provision of those who serve you so that the kingdom can be extended, Lord. We know we need money to be able to do those things sometimes. So, Lord, we just pray that anyone uh, that is a believer, that, Lord, there would not be a decrease of finances, but there would be an increase of finances so that we can help those who are struggling uh, because maybe they haven't been able to go to their job or their business has been slow. Lord, we just pray for abundance in the generous people, Lord, the people with the heart of love to, to help those who are in need. Yeah. And we thank you for the media, for technology, for all of those things, Lord. We ask that truth would be uh, communicated. We ask that there would be um, a voice of comfort and of hope that would rise up even in this time, Lord, that the, the news uh, leading news anchors and those who are informing us of what's going on, that, that they would have a confidence in your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that we know there are many in our government and even our vice president who is a strong believer, and we pray that those who are similar uh, in their faith in the media would be uh, lifted up to a place where they have influence and they're able to be a voice of comfort and a voice of peace in the midst of the chaos. Yeah. And we just thank you, Lord, for, for releasing into us strength, supernatural strength. Your word says that you strengthen us with might in our inner man by the power of your Holy Spirit. So we just receive that now. That we would have grace to continue to pray all the way through, Lord, that we would not be lazy or apathetic or weary in our well-doing, but, Lord, that we would have supernatural energy to rise to this situation, to pray all the way through and to deliver those uh, provisions, whatever you lead us to do in this time, Lord, that we would be energized with the gospel yeah, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to post, or we did already, um, the National Day of Prayers prayer uh, list. And we'll just continue to post things um, on our Facebook page and our website. So just continue to check in on there. Watch your emails, those of you that are Vanguard Church family, uh, for instructions about what to do. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Does it, is there anything else that we need to say? No? Jesus! Jesus! Yay, Jesus! All right, well, be blessed, and we love you guys, and we will see you later.